Praise God. All right. Delighted. Thank you, Pastor. I appreciate you. And, and uh, I say again, you know, haven't said it in a while, Church Alive is worth the drive. Amen. Might be a little challenge. Thank you for those of you that have toughed the weather and risked your lives. Amen. Risked your lives and your at great uh, inconvenience to yourself. I, I was on my way back. Um, what time is it? Okay. I was on my way back from North Carolina. We were in uh, West Virginia, and my wife and I got a call from um, our beloved uh, Linda Edwards. Um, she'll be here in uh, April to do a Seder. We are going to have a Seder on the 17th of April. You mark your calendar. That should be a Friday. Somebody make sure I got the right date. 17th of April should be a Friday. If I'm, uh, Is that right? 17th or 19th? Somebody correct. 19th. 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 Thank you. 19th because it's right before our Resurrection Sunday celebration. Uh, but Linda said to me, she said, you know, um, I heard you don't like the snow. <laughs> yeah. And she said, she said in the Jewish culture that the snow and the ice represent the cleansing of the earth and the restoring of all things new. And I thought, well, wow, huh, okay, praise God, I received that. I didn't, because I didn't know that. Some of you may have known it, but I didn't know that. And so it changed my perspective. I still don't like it. Um, I still don't like it, but you know, we're being what? Yeah. And that's what I took it. Yeah. And that's what I took it. I'm just being cleansed. You know, I don't know about you, but I need to be cleansed. Maybe y'all clean. I don't know. Y'all clean. I'm just, I need to be cleansed. Amen. But I'm delighted that with that. And I'm certainly glad that you're here this morning. Uh, again, that you took the time to come out and certainly appreciate our helps ministry. You guys are amazing. Uh, yeah, you are amazing. Um, in particular, our children's ministry. Do you want the word of the Lord? No, I'm looking, I'm pointing at somebody. The Lord has been dealing with me about you. And your calling is higher than what you've accepted. And the challenges that you face have been a little struggling for you. But you know in your heart what God has called you to do. And I can't, I can't say other than what the Lord says. Because it's our responsibility on all of us to say yes when God says yes. The delay, the delay many times causes an opening for the enemy. And once he gets a foothold in our lives, it's hard to get his butt out. <laughs> Except we know who we are, and you know who you are. You know who you are. Let's talk when we get a chance, okay? All right. Lift your hands to the Lord. Father, we give you praise. We bless you. We worship you. We honor you. We love you, my God. How much I love you is more than my words can articulate. My heart is overwhelmed by your great grace and mercy. If it had not been for you on my side, I would not be here today. You've looked out for us when we didn't know we needed even looking out for. You restored my soul, Lord God. You lifted me up. You placed my feet on a rock so that I could stand on the foundation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Without you, I am nothing, but with you, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I pray your anointing would be upon this service today. Let the ears of those that are sitting in the audience today, both in person and by YouTube, God, or online, let them hear the word and what thus saith the Lord for them today, particularly specific, Lord. Let it be a specific word for their edification and their deliverance, God. We will not allow the enemy to steal from us any longer. We submit ourselves unto the mighty hand of God and do time you will exalt us we submit therefore unto God and we resist the devil come on say it with me I resist the devil I resist the devil and I command him to flee in the name of Jesus devil flee our lives we are free whom the Lord has set free is free indeed can you say amen to that this morning again welcome to our YouTube audience we're delighted that you turned in we pray that you'll get something out of this we encourage you to take notes, write down, make sure you're not just sitting there, just kind of going through the motions. Make sure that you're intentional and deliberate about learning this morning. The Lord has a word for you. Amen. I want you, if you would, I'm going to close out something that I've been trying to close out for a while now. And because the Lord is moving us in a new direction, turn with me to the book of 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, please. 1 Corinthians 13. We're going to close out the fruit of the spirit. Haven't really done it justice, but I did what I believe the Lord has called me to do in that regard. And really, ultimately, in the end of the day, that's all you can do. You don't do your best. You do what? Come on, say that like you know it. Say whatever it takes. 
We do whatever it takes. We don't just do our best. People say, well, I did my best. But many times your best is not good enough because it might be tainted by your own bias. You know, if you're like me, Tommy Roberts in the natural before I was born again was a lazy guy. Didn't like to work hard. Didn't want. I just, you know, took whatever road path of least resistance educationally, morally, you know, uh, in any realm of life. But then the Lord got a hold of my life and realized, woke me up to realize that, you know what? This life is not given to the swift or to the strong, but it's given to them that endure to the end. And in order to endure, you have to make a decision that's of quality. I heard Brother Kenneth Copeland say that years ago. A quality decision is one that you cannot be easily moved off of. And in that, with that understanding came responsibility. And if you want to be something in the kingdom, you have to be willing to take on responsibility. Responsibility does not make it easy for you. It's not easy for your life to be responsible. Glory to help me this morning. You know, what God wants you to do is he wants you to take his mantle, his calling, his anointing, his empowerment, his authority, his name, his blood, his his, his scepter of righteousness and take it and face the devil down and tell him you cannot win no matter how hard you try. I am a son of the king. I am redeemed from the curse of the law. Right? And our lives, you know, most of us, if we're honest, most of our lives were a mess. I don't care how good we were, they were still a mess without Jesus. And the reality, what happens is many times we come in contact with knowledge because that's how, that's how wisdom is born. It's born through knowledge. It's born through information. you got to get good information in order to make good decisions. And once we, she and I submitted our, ourselves to the Lord properly, we started getting, receiving better information that started, started filtering its way down through our own mindset. Many of you sitting here, right here this morning, even those of you watching online, you hear me, but you hear me through your own filter of your mindset. You know, I know how, many times what people will do is they say, I already know that. And because you think you know that, that's how you miss it because you have to understand that these things are lost to us unless we put them into practice every day. And people that should be more mature than they are, they should act more mature than they are. They should literally be more mature than they are. This is no condemnation. It's just you have to come to a place of understanding your life is not your own. When you, when you submit yourself to God, you literally give up all rights to who you are. And all of a sudden, the nature of the Most High begins to take place, and there's a transformation that takes place. No longer do I think the thoughts of carnality and sin and unrighteousness. God is purging me from my own self. Amen. And when we get to that point, now we can be effective in the kingdom. Yeah. Now we can make a difference. It doesn't, take a, it doesn't take a multitude to make a difference in the kingdom. The Bible says God in Romans, Paul writes, he says that God uses for God uses the foolish things of the world to confound the wise and the base things or the things that are at the lowest level to bring to nothing the things that are way up here. So you can literally walk into the region to the to the office of the of the of the president of the university with a word from God that will shape him to his core. He may not receive you, but he doesn't have to receive you like Moses walked into Pharaoh. He just goes in at the authority of God and changes things just by simply what he says out of his mouth. The confidence of God. But if you are corrupted in your thinking, then you're corrupted in your doing. So when I tell people, come to church, come to church, keep your thinking cap on, so to speak. Keep your mind open. Stop closing your mind. Stop acting like the biggest thing about church is how I'm dressed. Stop thinking about if I, the biggest thing about me being in church is whether I pray in tongues or not. It is not that. I wish I had some help this morning. I haven't preached to y'all in a couple weeks, so y'all know I'm come fully loaded this morning, right? Crowds don't move me. <laughs> they don't move me. <laughs> Woo, I cut my teeth on four people, Kelsey. Are you feeling me? You know, I've done a whole lot less than this and it doesn't move me. But what we come to understanding of the reality of the word of God and how really literal, literally powerful it is in our life, not just spiritually. Spiritual, as spiritual people, we have a tendency to think of everything in a spiritual connotation. And that is right and that is, that is necessary, but it is not the only thing. I have to, if the word of God does not work for me practically, if it doesn't get me seven pieces of plastic that cost $7 a piece or five pieces of plastic that cost $7 a piece for nothing, then how can it possibly ever heal my body? from sickness 
But when I can walk into a store without having to perform and say, hallelujah, bless the Lord and speak in 12 tongues. All I got to do is show up and the power of God shows up before I get there. When I go in for the job interview that I know I'm not qualified for, I've had jobs that I know good and well I was not qualified for. I was not qualified for them. I had a skill set that could learn and could be able to master it with given time. But at the time that I sat down for the interview, I was not the best possible candidate. But there was something going on on the inside of my my reformation, as it were, as God is restoring my mind to his absolute greatness and power and authority and his desire to love me beyond my own ability to love myself. He showed me through somebody open up a door and say, you the one. Really? If you've ever been surprised by what God has done, you have not been in faith. I ain't getting no, I'll stay over here because at least I got to If you ever get surprised by what God has done, you are not in faith. The Bible says that faith is the assurance of things hoped for. It is what? The evidence of things not seen. I drove up, I'll tell her, I'll tell the story. I drove up, I told her, I said, I'm believing for this car. I ain't ashamed. Randy, when Randy Stone was here at the, at the conference, you know, Randy's car got as many miles on it as mine. Now I got 2,000 more on it. She run like a dream, baby. Amen. <laughs> and she paid for it. Amen. 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 Uh, am I too ashamed to drive a car that's got 200,000 miles on it? Should I have another one? The other one's out there. All I got to do is walk into it. But until I walk into it, the Bible says that God and God will supply all of my needs according to what? I told her by faith. I said, baby, this thing's going to work. I, didn't, I only told him a little bit. Can I just be led by the Holy Ghost this morning? <laughs> Hope so too. I drove up to the hotel in the expectation of spending, how many nights we spent in five? Something like that, five nights. You know, and I mean, it's one thing when you budget for it. We had budgeted for it, but I had an expectation of things were going to be a little bit different. I drove up to the hotel, got out. Shout out to Agape Faith Church, amen, Clemson, North Carolina. Pastor J.B. Susan, love you guys. When I walked into the front desk, pulled out my credit card, the girl said, you don't need that. We don't need that. Suddenly, <laughs> ain't nobody said next. Ain't nobody said nothing. Y'all gonna get it. Y'all gonna get it. So I took my little credit card and it was kind of like, okay. But I wasn't surprised by it. I wasn't expecting it. But I wasn't surprised by it. Because the Bible says that he is able to do exceeding. Ephesians 3, 9. Exceeding abundantly above all that I can ask or think. According to the, because you can't forget that. The power that's working in me is faith. Now, that was one. There was another one. I ain't going to tell that one. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Suffice it to say, when we, we got a late start. I mean, I wasn't really pressed with the time table, but we got a little later start than I wanted. I got some water running. And uh, I got it. Yeah. And so when I went, uh, we got ready to walk out the door. We were walking out of the door, heading, getting ready to get on the road, walking out of the door. Do you hear me? Five minutes later, or five minutes sooner, an individual that stopped by my house would not have caught us. Five. Yeah, you're getting it. You understand what I'm saying? Five. You know how it is when you're running a little late and you think it's you? I better go over here because I got the spirit. To spit it. No, I'm just kidding. And I was like, I could hear the Lord say, you need to just relax and just go with my timetable. Because, you know, as a man, I'm trying to get to get on the road. I'm trying to get, I got a long drive. We got, I don't know how far we're going to drive tonight. The weather is not the greatest. And the Lord said, just chill. I chilled. And as I was chilling with putting on my coat on, getting ready to walk into my garage, a knock on the door came. 
Well, when the door bell rang or whatever, individual came to the door, they said to me, they said to us, um, I was kind of hoping that you weren't going to, you wouldn't know who's going to do this because this is what the Lord told me to do. And I didn't really want, you know, I didn't want no recognition, so I'm not going to, I'm going to honor that person's request. But bottom line is that they handed us an envelope. Yeah, I hear what I'm saying, man. Yeah. Yeah. See, 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 listen. Y'all think this stuff happens for preachers. I tell you a whole bunch of preachers this ain't happening for. I've been one of them most of my life. So what you do when somebody hands you something, don't look at it. I'm just, I'm helping somebody now, okay? If you ain't getting this, you will never get somebody handing you something. And so when they handed me something, put your hand up. They just put it in my hand, and they wanted to leave my house, but they were standing in my front door, so I pulled them in the house. <laughs> Many times you have to pull people into your house. Many times you got to pull people into the kingdom realm yeah. so that they can receive what God has for them. It's not just you giving to me. It's God getting back to you. Yeah. Oh, help me, God. Yeah. So when I took it, we prayed, we blessed them, conferred the blessing on them, took it and put it away. I didn't even open it. I don't do that anymore. I don't do that. Because if it's $2, I might want to be giving my blessing. But no, I'm just kidding. Right? Come on now. Y'all don't act real spiritual. So we took it, you know, and received it. And uh, when we did, before we left, we did look at it. And boy, was it a blessing. Now, that person knows nothing about what we need. God, help me this morning. Jesus. The one who does sits high, the Bible says, and looks low and observes the conduct of man. Are you thinking that people are just going to do that if you just live in any old kind of way? If the fruit of the Spirit is not matured in you enough where you still think it's about you, it is so not about my wife and I and concerning this church. It is just not. So then what we did, we, we didn't fall off the, the, the pineapple truck just yesterday with no shoes on. So what we did is when we opened it before we left, the power of a praying woman helps me so much. She said, we need to, we need to, we need to sow this. So we took the tithe right off the top, baby, <laughs> and blessed somebody else with it. Are you feeling me? What is God doing? Well, he is obeying his own word. He's keeping covenant to a thousand generations. And unless you begin to see these things, the miraculous, the marvelous, the weddings that weren't pre-planned, God just says, do it now. Amen. That's how you get blessed. Yes. Now, have I always lived that way? No, I have not. It was a struggle for us to get there. It's going to be a struggle for you, too. But it shouldn't take you as long as it took me because I'm telling you the truth. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you the truth till it hurts. I'm going to tell you the truth till it hurts. Because the truth don't always feel good. When you're standing against the enemy, believing for healing, does it feel good in your body? You better believe it doesn't. But God is faithful. Can you say amen to that? I told you to turn to 1 Corinthians, didn't I? Did I tell you that? Verse 13, I mean, chapter 13, verse 3. I'm going to read this from the Amplified Bible so I can get out your way. I don't want to bore you this morning. Even if I dole out all that I have, to the poor and providing food. And if I surrender my body to be burned in order that I may glory, but have not love. What kind of love is that? Somebody tell me. What kind of love is God's love? Agape love. And have not the agape love, we can say it that way, God's love in me, I gain nothing. In other words, you can do things that have no return on investment. The one person who will never get, never get a lack of return on his investment is the Father God. He invested Jesus in the earth. And as you and I begin to understand that concept, it causes you to start thinking about your life. And, I, and I, this is not unscriptural. I'm going to say this this way, but some of y'all might be a little taken aback, but I'll, I'll fix it for you. You almost look at your life from the value that God looks at his son's life because you have to understand that whenever you give, it, there's, a, there's a requirement monetarily for you to be blessed. Some of y'all didn't get that. I'll say it again. In other words, when she and I 
submitted to the will of God, and many of you have done that. We got an old Georgia girl here and, you know, some other folks from different places. But when we answered the call of God, there wasn't just, we weren't just looking for a return on our investment of obedience. That's your investment. Come on, say amen. amen. My investment of obedience to do the will of God does not just bring my heavenly home in the sweet by and by. There is a reward that God has planned for you for doing anything he tells you to do, no matter how small in his kingdom. And so you're blessed. My expectation is that because we did what we were called to do, God would do what he was called to do. You cannot live in this earth without money. Who has lived successfully in this room without money? Show me your hand. And if you put it up, I'm going to cast a lying devil out to you. You can't do it. You cannot. Why? Not because of your own choosing, but because this is where we have been called to reside. And if you live in Iowa, most particular, you better have more than what you need necessarily in Texas. Because it is expensive to live here. And I'm not just talking about living at a low level. Y'all gonna have to forgive me this morning. I'm talking about living at a level that talks about John 10, that he that we have we've been called to live life and that more abundantly. So when I show up and I may not, in my mind, I'm not sure. I know I got I know what I got, but what does God have? Help me somebody. Do you see what I'm talking about? So when you invest in the kingdom, God is required by his own faith and commandment to bring about that which is necessary for you to live an abundant life. Okay. Verse four, love endures long and is patient and kind. Again, I'm closing out Galatians. I'm going to turn over there in a minute. Love endures long and is patient and kind. God's kind of love, you're going to have to, you're going to, have to stick with this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can I see how many people will be honest with me this morning? How much time do I have? Thank you. Um, <laughs> all afternoon, hey. Of course, we do have to get out of here. Let me see how many people will be honest with me. How many of y'all feel like or have felt like within the time and period of your salvation, like giving up because it's hard? Raise your hand. Not everybody's hand goes up, but I believe everybody has, has sensed it. You, you do. You know why I know that to be true? Because if not, then there's no, read for, no need for the Lord by the Holy Spirit to write, the race is not given to the swift or the strong, but to he that endures to the end. So we have all been tempted by feeling like, uh, you know. Uh. But see, what you have to do is you have to understand that there's an endurance component to this life. And then just have them because you give your life to the Lord. Matter of fact, like we've, we've often said, when we got born again, you know, we got born again and I had just gotten a settlement from the Air Force and we got out and, you know, we thought we had a little change. We really did have a little change. And, and, and so we opened our house up to all these people. These people came to stay with us. Next thing you know, we were, we were almost broke and had no place to live. And I thought I was doing the right thing by God. You know what happened? I didn't have good information. When I started getting, getting better information, receiving better information, started making better decisions. But I also realized that, you know what, it wasn't God's fault. Come on now, let me, let me just tell you. Wherever you're at, whether you're there financially, whether you're that emotionally, mentally, it is not God's fault. And I'll pull your religious toes in, it is not necessarily the devil's fault. Yes, he is to be blamed and he is culpable, but mostly it is your fault because you made the decision. I'll come over here because they didn't say nothing over here, so I'm going to keep walking back and forth. It starts in the mirror. You know, I mean, you know, we all make choices, do we not? Yep. Yep. I better stop right there because I could keep going and be meddling, but I don't want to meddle. Amen? Amen. Say, don't meddle, Pastor. Don't meddle. Don't meddle. Love endures long and is patient. God, help me with this one here. Patience. I don't mean to be sexist. I don't mean to be, to be misogynistic. I don't mean to be any of those things. I don't mean to, to, to bring any type of reproach on my dear sisters, but y'all need to learn how to have patience. Especially with your men, the men in your lives. Amen. Amen. 
I ain't got to look at nobody. I can just go right here. I ain't got to look at nobody. I ain't got to look at nobody. I ain't got to make no eye contact. You all know that it is hard. I don't know what it is that God did with y'all, but patience is not most of y'all's strong suit. I'm talking in general terms. Don't be mad at me. Don't write. Don't throw nothing at me. Don't write bad letters. I'm just saying, in general, it is hard for women to be patient. But by, let me make sure I qualify that the right way. Most of it is because, men, you are way over patient. You just border on lazy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't say amen don't say amen just don't say amen I'm just saying you know because it's hard for a woman who's been called alongside you alongside you to be a help meet if you ain't doing nothing how I know that one that ain't theory that's fact that's truth <laughs> And yet, men, we struggle with our own level of patience because it becomes a matter when we get into a place in our lives where all of a sudden we feel like we have come short of the destiny and the goals that we thought, you know, men are supposed to go out and be conquerors. We're supposed to go out and take authority. We're supposed to go out and lead. And yet many times we have not been taught how to lead. And so we run up against obstacles. And the next thing you know, we got a woman barking in our ear telling us, come on, where are you going? And I have no clue because I have not submitted myself to the power and the teaching of God. When I hear God, I get direction. When I hear God, I know how to pray. When I hear God, I know what to do. I know what decision to make when I hear God. But without God, aren't y'all glad y'all came this morning? Me too. I'm glad I came too. Love is patient and kind. Help us with kindness. We get critical, but we forget the component of compassion. And truth, I've said this before, without compassion, without love, is mean. It is hateful and it is hard to be received. Yes, you should not wear a dress that exposes way too much for me to see. But if I have to say it that way, you will not receive it that way. As a matter of fact, you might tell me where to get off. I don't care how anointed I am. I don't care how many churches I have, how many people. If I can't learn how to say it the right way, I need to keep my mouth shut. Help us, Lord. I didn't mean to go here. I'm going to go here since I'm here. <laughs> I have one wife. Thank God for that. I have one connection and one attraction to one wife. She's my wife. She's my helpmate. She's my partner, my friend. She deals with me when don't nobody else want me. But as a man, I am attracted to the physical beauty of a woman. And when I see too much of your beauty, God help me in this place, I need to be able to step back and say, wait a minute, put it all back in where it's supposed to be. I'm just telling you that is a way to say it and a way to show it. Let's make sure that the two line up. Get many amens on that one. I'm going to keep moving right along. And some, 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 some of us have not understood. I'm back, still on kindness. Some of us have not understood, men, and we've allowed this. This thing has gotten way out of control. Well, the next thing you know, we've got this movement that, that, that identifies and tries to downplay the, 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 the masculinity of a man and the, the femininity of a woman. You have to understand that God, the Bible says, in the beginning made he male and female. And because of that, there is going to be things that you're going to have to encounter. And they used to tell us back in the day, bounce your eyes. You ain't got to look at everything that walks in a lustful component. Amen. Teaching better than y'all say amen. That's okay. Amen. Kindness. I recognize that just because a woman smiles at me, she ain't wanting me. They want me. No, they don't. <laughs> Let me shut up. Let me keep going. I'm, I don't mean to bore y'all. Let me keep going. Let me keep going. <laughs> mm -hmm. Love never is envious, never boils over with jealousy. Envious, desiring of that which does not belong to you. Mm. 
God help me, I could preach here all day long, but I can't, I ain't got time. Envy is not just desiring that which does not belong to you. Envy is a spirit that controls your motivation. And when I'm envious of something that somebody else has, we used to call it back in the day, keeping up with the Joneses. When I'm envious of something that somebody else has and it's not my time to receive it, I will put myself in a position of, 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 of vulnerability to the devil because I will step into a realm that does not, there is, where there is no covering. Kelsey got a great house because Kelsey has done the things that are suitable for him to have a good house and I see his house. I wasn't mad in my house till I went to Kelsey's house. He's younger. He's got a different culture. And all of a sudden I want to have what he has but God has seen what I'm able to receive and he's allowed that thing to be in my, if I want to change where I live, I got to change what I say. If I'm going to change what I say, I'm going to have to change what I do with corresponding action. I can't just have whatever I want. God help me. It is, it, is the, it is the driving force. I know I'm in the house today. I don't care what you say. I'm not talking to every one of you. I'm talking to a, a spiritual audience this morning. I hear the Lord say that. It is the thing that drives pedophilia. And rape and incest. That body, that individual does not belong to you. And yet you would override what God has placed on the inside of you. People say, well, they're not born again. No, you still have within you the capacity to resist the devil. But you will not yield to the Holy Ghost. You will not submit to God. And so the devil runs rampant and causes you to put your hands where they do not belong. Your eyes where they do not belong. Turn off the computer. Get off the pornography. And let the power of God change you from the inside out. It's not just jealousy. It's a spirit that drives. And churches all too often get caught up in it. We want to be like the church down on the corner. Be who you are where you are. You're not responsible for being like the other person next to you. I tell you that all the time. Glory to God. <laughs> Glory to God. Ooh, Jesus, I didn't know. Okay, all right, all right. Boils over with jealousy. The boiling over with jealousy is a, is a representation of that thing is so, uh, you know, yesterday I was boiling some soup. You know, we had our grandkids all weekend long. David and Stephanie, I'm going to get y'all. Uh, that's a whole other story. But anyway, <laughs> never mind. I ain't going no deeper than that. Anyway, so when I set a pot on the stove to boil, I knew its potential was to boil over. So I turned the handle inside because I got little ones that don't, oh God, help me this morning. They don't know the danger that happens when things boil over in their lives. And people who we thought were spiritual, who are the fruit of the spirit has not grown up in, we thought they were spiritual. But when all of a sudden this thing started boiling up, and boiling up doesn't mean an evil thing. Sometimes it's just, I want what I want, and you can't tell me I can't have it. So you marry that man, and he found out later on he wasn't a man. You marry that woman, and she was actually a witch. Because you were boiling over, not allowing the tempering. Of, so what did I have to do? I had to turn down the heat gradually. Help me somebody. I don't know how I got here. Turn down the heat. But the only one that can temper and turn it down is the power of the living God inside of you. Your passions run wild, baby. You know, yeah, yeah, we know, we know. You. Some of you have been around here long enough. You heard me talk about girls gone wild, the videos they used to have. And it was all kinds of corruption. Those of us at 1329 on Dante, we got a few. <laughs> and, and with that, though, you have to understand that what's inside of you, your base nature, your carnal nature, never goes away. It don't go nowhere. <laughs> How many of y'all have ever binge watched a TV show? Y'all ain't saying, y'all better stop lying. You know why? Because you got a base nature. Sometimes you just want to do what you want to do. 
But the power of God, the Bible says, can bring that back into a better. There ain't nothing wrong with TV. Y'all stop acting like TV is a bad thing. TV in and of itself is not evil. It's your motivation and what you watch that makes it evil. Yeah, I know they put on trash and a bunch of stuff. I know, but I ain't got to watch that. All right, let me keep going before I lose y'all. Where'd I leave off? Verse 5. Verse 4. Love never is envious, nor boils over with jealousy. It is not boastful or vainglorious. Does not display itself haughtily. It is... (laughs) Is that what your translation says? Like a peacock, she said. That's a good one. I like that. Does not display itself. Um, let's read it again. Is not boastful or vainglorious. Does not display itself haughtily. I'm going to tell you all something. Let me, let, me, let me do something here because, you know, I'm always curious how the Holy Spirit's going to use me on any particular day. That's why y'all can't ever figure out what's he going to teach on next. Y'all don't know until I find out. And most of the times I don't find out until I get up here. And I'm okay with that. Yes. If you're not, that's you. Amen, somebody. But, but what the Lord does is he brings out stuff that I know that we are dealing with now. Yeah. And for that, I am eternally grateful because I know, you know, I could preach a message up here that would have no relevance to you. Yeah. And in, in, in doing that, you wouldn't really be blessed by that. You think, wow, we was good, you know, person. But you feel like this disconnect is like, I, was, I didn't really get anything. Because I'm preaching out of my flesh instead of out of the spirit. And I ain't going to do that. Amen. I said, I'm not going to do that. Amen. I ain't going to let nobody else get up here and do it either. How did TJ preach last week? I, I, huh? oh, it was so good. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I didn't miss it because I watched it. Well, then you saw it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't miss nothing. I don't miss nothing. My, my wife will tell you, I'm, I'm investigative. Some of y'all can call that nosy, but I'm investigative. <laughs> I make sure things are supposed to go the way they're supposed to go. Because I heard somebody say, shame on you for not being at the conference. I told them later, I said, no, ain't no shame on us. No, 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 no shame. You might have missed something, but no shame. Amen? Amen. Amen. Pull your religious toes in. Why y'all acting like that? Pull them in. So I, I, let, me, let me read this from the expanded Bible. That's what I'm going to do. Let me do that real quick. I get out your way because, you know. Uh, 1 Corinthians 13 are still. And I'm going to look at this word vain and glorious. It says here uh, from verse 4, uh, is not boastful, vain, glorious, does not display itself haughtily. This, this, by, this translation says, ch- charity or love. Love suffers long, is kind, it doesn't envy not, and charity vaunteth not itself, it is not puffed up. Puffed up people are real, and I know I'm going to get there, I'm a little ahead of myself, are real sensitive. They sensitive. I can't use them in an illustration because they want to figure out why I picked on them. I think it's a great honor to be used in illustration. Amen. Thank you, JT. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> I, think it, I think when somebody singles me out, you know, and you could take this one or two ways. If I single you out and talk about how, how beautiful this, this, this vest wear looks on her, she, for one, she ain't never going to forget it. She ain't going to forget that I said that. That's why I said to her and not you. Okay. Second, second of all, Kathy Hush. Second of all, <laughs> Kathy sit back there. See, Kathy been married as long as we have. She know. Second of all, what I also recognize is this. What I recognize is that what the enemy tries to do is he tries to take whatever, um, um, uh, uh, what's the word? Compliments or acknowledgement anybody gives me, and he wants to take it to the degree where all of a sudden I think I'm more than I am. You know. Somebody in the room got to be, got to be, got to understand reality. Oh, help me, God. Okay. Here's reality for you. We go to church last week. We're at a church last week. Uh, really wasn't expecting to do, do what we did, but in the process of being there, we were blessed. We sat up front. We were honored. Very, very, very blessed. Very blessed. More than I expected. Okay. I was talking to a couple that were missionaries to India, and they had recently been blacklisted from India. Uh, at lunch, we were talking, and they were uh, just a blessing. And so, in the, com- in, the, in the process of talking, this, this statement came up. Uh, so, what you're saying, Pastor Tommy, is that you're not using Iowa as a platform for somewhere else. And I said, You're absolutely right. 
Now think about this for a minute. Because if I take all the celebratory words, if I take the connectivity that I have with various ministers of the gospel, because y'all ain't seen nothing yet. Dr. Savelle's coming. Gosh, man. Y'all think y'all seen, y'all ain't seen nothing. How many of y'all, I know she has. How many of y'all have seen Dr. Savelle minister in person? Person. Okay. Y'all ain't seen nothing yet. This, 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 this man is just so down to earth. He's short, too. Don't tell him I said that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you better not. You'd be, you're fired. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> um, anyway, but, but, but with that being said, you, you can't allow yourself. Come on now. Stay with me now. Please stay with me. Some of you that are signing up for ministry class, some of you that God is using for prophetic words, God's going to use you. He's going to use you. He's supposed to use you. He's supposed to use you. He's supposed to use you. He wants to use you. He's supposed to use you. He's supposed to use you. But don't make it more than it is. But here's the other thing. Don't make it less than it is. Right. Stop saying, well, you know, I'm not worthy. Mm -hmm. I, it's, you know, when people say it's almost a sin. Mm -hmm. You mean to tell me, I'm going to pick on you because you're sitting there. You mean to tell me, because you came by yourself today. Hi, Shirley. <laughs> uh, wave to your wife. Wave to your wife. That's the best you can do? No, I'm just kidding. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. So, so, so here's Jack. Jack says, you know, I'm believing God for healing, but then he, he turns around and says, well, I'm not worthy. You wouldn't say that, but he's not worthy. What is that? I don't have, I don't, st stand up real quick. I want you to say, no, I'm not. To whatever I say, say, no, I'm not. You're my son. No, I'm not. You're my oldest son. No, I'm not. You look just like me. No, I don't. <laughs> that's, that's my grandson. Where'd he go? Where's my grandson? That's my grandson. How does that sound? Y'all think he's crazy? I think he's crazy. So. When the Lord says to us that we are his own, when he says we're healed, when, we say, when he says we're delivered, and we say, no, we're not, that's a, that's a position of arrogance. Oh, God, help me. How, how is it possible that the blood, the, 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 the spotless blood of the lamb of the living God could not have the same effect on you as it does on you and you and you and you and you. How is that possible? And people say, well, you know, I just don't feel worthy. See, see there we go. And you know what? You're not feeling worthy is, is, is I will say what the scripture says. It is as if you put Jesus to an open shame, nailing him to the cross again. Because some or another, it wasn't good enough for you or me. Does that make sense? So, so that's where that puffed up comes up. Let me keep going. Verse 5. Mm. Oh, it says, does not display itself haughtily. Y'all get that one, right? You know, God delivered me from having to have an entourage to walk into this church. God delivered me from having to have an entourage. I need three bodyguards and an assistant to walk into church, and we got 50 people. <laughs> people do it all of the time and even those ones that need it there is a there is an understanding of the significance of it are you feeling me this morning you know we got to keep this stuff in balance if it's going to work at all okay verse 5 it is not this conceited arrogant and inflated with pride. It is not rude, unmannerly. Verse 5 on that. Does not act unbecomingly. I cannot tell you how much I can't stand to be around arrogant or conceited people. I have no time for them. One of the things, one of the first things ministers, preachers, one of the first things the Lord dealt with me about, because I couldn't be preaching here today if it wasn't true, was my ego. My ego, the way I see myself. What's significant to me? How important is it to me to have a whole crowd? How that gonna work if I need a hundred people to preach to? How that gonna work? How's that gonna work if you if you in your the position that God has placed you, whether whether you work at a at a convenience store or whether you work at the in the highest profile place in the university? How that gonna work if you ain't figured out that it's not about you? And the next thing you know, you're trying to find out why you're not blessed and you haven't put this area of, of love into effect, the fruit of the Spirit operating in your life. 
That's why I can't stand people. I know, I know Life Point doesn't do it. I know nobody in here does it. Write it right on a, uh, on a, um, a, a, a meal receipt, a tip. Find Jesus. Jesus saves. That is so arrogant. You have placed yourself above this server, this individual who got up out of their bed to come serve your old nasty butt. And you think somehow or another you special because you got the Holy Ghost and you ain't got nothing but a spirit of witchcraft and divination. Thinking you better than God, than people walking around. How dare you? Got to have a title. Away with a title. My name is Tommy, baby. I am the shepherd of this house, not by my own choosing, but by his. I don't need you to call me that, but you get blessed by calling me that. Uh, I could go deeper with that. I better back off. How much time? Am I out of time? Flip that number over. <laughs> Glory to God. Are you feeling me this morning? Man, we get it so wrong. I've been in churches with folks, man, they've been evil, just flat out mean. God, we're in this last church we were at this past Sunday, those folks, some loving folks. We're in there, we're in the back with all the other speakers and everything and uh, bumped into somebody that knew us and I didn't even know who they were. Oh, this is what they said. Oh, and Sister Smith, if you're watching, thank you. We love you so much. Oh, when your daughter passed away, we got the call, and the whole church went into intercession. That's love. Fifteen years ago, y'all. Almost to the day. And she, I know you. I never met her. We never met her. But if you go in, you miss the big shot. Sister, sister, sister inflated. Sister elevated. <coughs> Pay attention to me. And you get what you get which is usually nothing. I better move on because y'all ain't very excited about that part. Let me keep going. I got to hurry up. I'm going to get out of your way. Not conceited, arrogant, inflated with pride. I got I, I to say this last part. Pride, 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 pride crushes way too many of us. Mm. Yeah, Father. Pride, pride crushes way too many of us. I mean that. I mean that from the depths of my heart. If, if, if I fully trust Kelsey then there's nothing that I should feel like I can't say to him. Good or bad. I mean, I'm talking about if I really am walking in this thing. But if I'm just putting on a show, you know, and it's like, well, you know, I, I, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this about Tommy Roberts. I don't know about y'all. If I ain't got no money for gas, and I make my way to church, and I ain't sure that I'm going to get back home because my needle's sitting on E and I ain't got no money in it is wrong for you to not share that information with somebody. Amen. For what that's worth. I don't know what that's worth. I'm just telling you what the Lord said. And, 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 and this is why. Because we don't want people to think less of us than what's going on. Can I tell you that most of us have a challenge in the financial arena? If you don't, let's talk because I want to find out what anointing you got. We do. So why is it that I can't say to Cynthia, Elder Cynthia, listen, you know, um, I, I'm, I'm going to get there. I've got, I I'm, I'm really am going to get there. I'm Hear it. What if she got it? Oh, yeah. I am. If she won't give it to me, won't nobody in this church give it to me. And what the devil does is he tries to make us think, well, you know, I don't want to be embarrassed. Girl, you, God, you just made it here. I, I mean, what's going to be more embarrassing? You asking me for $5 or me passing you on the road as you out there on I-80 in sub-zero temperature. And I got to pull over and ask you, what's going on? I ran out of gas. Are you feeling me this morning? I left my Bible something. Anyway, I, I got to get out your way. I'm having too much fun. Anyway, I mean, that's, that's, come on, let's be real. Let's be who God has called us to be. Man, I, we don't have all the answers. We know where the answers lie. <laughs> and there's some things God just makes it possible. I don't have to ask you. 
the person that showed up in my house, I didn't say nothing to that person. I didn't have to ask him a thing because he already, oh, God. Ooh, Jesus. And that person said, I heard God say this. Okay, let me keep going. Where did I leave off? Verse 6? Verse 5. It sits on its own right, on its own way, for it is not self-seeking. It's not touchy. Oh, God. Touchy. There's some people that don't want a hug, okay? I get that. I get that, okay? Our dear brother's not here today who gives all the hugs. He, he's <laughs> I didn't say that. You said it. Anyway, uh, uh, Huggy McHuggerson. That's what I call him. He's Huggy McHuggerson. Y'all get that later. Anyway. But some people don't like to be touched. Okay. Mm-hmm. But you ain't got to act all rude about it. Right. Right. Don't be secret. You know? Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. If I, you know, he ain't, he ain't into the hugging thing. And I know he is, but he ain't the hugging thing. You know, we can kind of, you know, kind of be awkward. And, yeah. Tell you, you know, you know, keep on going. Do that. Do like this. That's the same thing. But when you act ugly, you know, I, ain't, I don't want to do that. Okay. So the next thing you know. Those, those thoughts and those attitudes start building up in you. And I don't care what anybody says. That stuff will build up and it's on the inside of you. And until you release it, next you know, you're going to try and figure out why nobody wants to come, up, come go to dinner with lunch with you. Why nobody wants to hang around you because you always got this scrawl on your face. I don't think I said that out loud. Did I think we're going to keep going. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm finishing. Um, you can read the rest of this. Let me just read it through real quick. It is not touchy or fretful or resentful. It takes no account of the evil done to it. it pays no attention to or suffering wrong. I, I know people right now, and I know people in my family, and I have no problem saying it. You know who you are. That still pay attention to suffering wrongs. Amen. I hope there's nobody in this room that does that. You better get over it. People have done you wrong, and they will do you wrong the rest of your time on earth because the devil's not going to let them not do you wrong. You better learn how to get over it. Does not rejoice in injustice or in righteousness, but rejoices when right and truth prevail. That's verse 6, verse 7. Love bears up under anything and say everything. Everything Everything that comes. The Bible says if it's not going to exaggerate in this, love bears up under anything and everything that comes, is is ever ready to believe the best of every person, doesn't make you naive, come on now. It's it's hopes and and are, are fadeless under all circumstances, and it endures everything without weakening. And I have in my Bible here a note that I've written, and you can read verse 8. Turn with me to Galatians 6, and I'm going to close with this. And I, I didn't do it justice, but I'm going I'm to just close this, because this is so important to my, it's been very important to my salvation. I hope it's important to yours. Galatians 6. So we expedited through the fruit of the Spirit, because the Lord is changing my direction and what he wants me to talk about beginning next week. Should he delay his coming and we not be raptured? If he does come, I'll see y'all in heaven. If he doesn't, I'll see you here. (laughs) And I'm going to tell y'all something. If they ain't calling for no blizzard, I'm going to be here. I regret it. I I live right around the corner, but I was going to be here anyway. I grew up in snow that comes like this. They called it a snow machine. I know y'all ain't got that where you from, all that kind of stuff. But it it, it came, amen? (laughs) Galatians 6. Let me close you out. She stopped holding the clock. I guess I'm out of time. Anyway, (laughs) brethren, glory to God, from the King James, verse 1. If a man or a person be overtaken in a fault, you which are spiritual, please underline this, make a note, mark it in your Bible. Restore, hallelujah, such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear you one another's burdens, and so, what are we doing? Fulfill, come on, the law of Christ. What is the law of Christ? Come on, what is the new law of Christ? Love Love what? Love one another as I have loved you. Not just love your brother as you love yourself. Love one another as I have loved you. So what we're doing is when we see this, every one of us, and I would say this to a room full of preachers and pastors, I'll say it to a room full of you, many of you are preachers and pastors, uh, well, that might be prophetic in its nature for pastors. But anyway, uh, all of us are subject to fall. Amen. Truth be told, you have probably fallen and nobody caught you. But God was there. He caught you. 
He restored you. And so the reality of this, ver the reality, see how bad my, my Bible just falling. No, that's my concordance. It begins at first, first Peter. Falling. I've had this Bible a long time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, let me read it from the Amplified Bible real quick. Brethren, verse 1, if any person is overtaken in misconduct, help me, Lord. He doesn't just say sin here. He says misconduct. Mis oh, God, help me, Jesus. It's, it's one thing for somebody else to say this. It's, it's, it's another thing for me to say it because you know I love you. Um, when our, our, we'll be celebrating the 15th anniversary of our daughter's departure to heaven on the 28th. This is not a leap year, right? Is this a leap year, though? This is not a leap year. So, actually, the first, because she departed on a leap year, uh, the first of, of, of February, as it were. And um, I say this based on the scripture I'm going to read to you. Um, misconduct for me does not necessarily mean the same thing for you. Um, I don't know. Dr. King, what you can do and get away with may not be what I can do and get away with. And that doesn't, that doesn't, that doesn't, um, um, Suggest sin. Please, please hear me well here. Okay, I'm going to close with this. But please understand, that does not suggest sin. When she and I, when our daughter went home to be with the Lord, um, you know, we had so, listen to the wording, engrafted ourselves in our local church that if I had stayed home, people would have wondered what was wrong. Are y'all feeling what I'm saying right now? Come on now, pull your religious toes in, stop acting super spiritual. I'm talking very real, real stuff today. The vast majority of people that are, not, that are not engrafted into the plan of God, and that does include a home church, that does include a home church, for us not to show up, they'd have wondered what was wrong. Did you get that? Most people would have stayed home and people would have thought it was just, that's what you do. Y'all get that? Yeah. And that doesn't make us super spiritual. But for us, it would have been misconduct. Right. So nobody, when they saw us, was surprised that we were there. Right. Mm. Because my life, her life, our lives are in him. Yeah. And so how would I dare let the devil Caused me to be home feeling... Now, could I have done it legitimately? Yes. But I know too much about God. So when he says, listen, my expectation, the Bible says I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. So I knew that in coming to the house of the Lord, I was going to sit next to a sister, as it were, maybe Sister Mandy, whoever it was that was there with us. And all the way, all the way in the church, we were getting loves and hugs and oh, glory, to rejoicing. Why? Because we were strengthening the other sisters and brothers because they could see something inside of us that was fully committed to the plan of God. So when you get overtaken in a fall, not if, let's read it one more time. Close with this. If a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering your own self, lest thou also be tempted. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Amplified Bible, same three verses. Brethren, if any person is overtaken in misconduct or sin of any sort, you who are spiritual, which implies that not everybody is spiritual. Some of y'all need to keep your mouth shut. If you're not spiritual, shut your mouth. Who are responsive to and controlled by the Spirit. Do we see that? Do we see that? In, in, in Amplified Bible, it's there. Who are responsive to and controlled by the Spirit. Well, that's all chapter 5 was talking about, the fruit of the Spirit. Hmm. should set him right and restore and reinstate him or her without any sense of superiority and with all gentleness, keeping an attentive eye on yourself, not on them, 
on you, lest you should be tempted also. Bear, endure, carry one another's burdens and troublesome, mo oh God, help me, troublesome moral faults and in this way fulfill and observe perfectly the law of Christ, the Messiah, and complete what is lacking in your obedience to it. For if any person thinks himself to be somebody too important to condescend to shoulder another's load when he is nobody of superiority except in his own estimation, he deceives and deludes and cheats himself. But let every person carefully scrutinize and examine and test his own conduct and his own work. He can then have the personal satisfaction and joy of doing something commendable in itself alone without resorting to boastful comparison with his neighbor. Close your Bibles. The Tommy translation of that is simply this. I've said it. I've said it. And I will continue to say it as God gives me opportunity over the years of my shepherding this church, which will be many years to come. I fully am invested in seeing this church reach its entire potential for the Lord. And I'm going to tell you, I can, I can ask God and petition God for the type of partners or members that join this church. If they're critical, hypercritical, if they are condescending, if they are rude, there is no place for that spirit in this church. Amen. Nowhere. If somebody comes in the door and they smell like they fell off a booze truck, I do not care. I will not scrutinize or judge. So be it. They are still candidate for the power and the glory of God. If they come in as females and they shirt, shirt, their skirt is way up here, I am not going to judge them. And neither are you. And when they come in, we will give them a modesty cloth so they can sit down and enjoy the service of the Lord. I saw a brother the other day. Smelled like a cigarette factory. And I don't care. I don't care. If you care, you probably want to leave. You got quiet over in this Holy Ghost church. Anyway, why do I say that? Because I understand that they are simply overtaken by a fault that has not allowed them to receive the information of righteousness, holiness, piety, whatever it is that comes from God, but it doesn't happen overnight. It didn't happen overnight in you, didn't happen overnight in you or me. So what we've got to do is endure long, suffer long with these people, comfort the feeble-minded, and so fulfill the work of Christ. Yeah. They'll get it after a while. Bless God. If you got it, they'll get it. Stand to your feet. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Ooh, you never know what people have to go through to get to a church service. You know, it would be easy for me to get up and just kind of do a 20-minute thing and sit down. Y'all don't think it would, but it would be if I didn't have to obey God. But when I say that, I don't mean to be self-serving. When I say that is because, look, if I drive, as she and I once did, drive two hours to get to your service and it takes 20 minutes for you to do your service, I am going to find another place to be in service. I'm just, that's just me. So this morning, as we've come, the Holy Spirit has beat us here, as he always does, meet us here. This morning, I want to pray for everybody collectively. Can I do that at the direction of the Lord? I want to pray. I want, I want, um, I want you to go stand next to Mary. Please. Thank you, Jesus. Cynthia, go stand next to Mary. I want all my elders. Glory to God. I want my female elders standing next to her this morning. Glory, 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 glory. You know, I'm, I'm about as real as they come. I mean, I, I, y'all may not think so, but I really am. I'm trying to figure this stuff out myself. You know, um, a few years ago, it's been a long time ago, when I was 19 years old, I tried to, I had a, considered, I had a suicide ideation. 
and had gone to the point where I'd actually put a a uh, 22 uh, long rifle, long barrel, underneath my chin, and I was sitting in my room. I 19. Come on, really? Um, thought life was over. Had had so many hurts and heartaches. You know, didn't feel the love of my father and all these other things going on. It was nothing more than a demonic attack. But I did I did uh, consider that. And then the Lord sent somebody by my house. And I've told you guys a story before, so I won't get into it. But that individual is still my friend today. And uh, they were on their way to another destination. The Lord told them, turn around. And when he tells the story, he's like, I had no clue. I wasn't even coming to see you. But the Lord said, I need to stop by and see you. So he altered his route as he was walking in our little town of Ithaca, New York. He was walking to the north side. And I was living on the south side at that time. So he turned around and came back and knocked on my door. That, that interrupted what I was doing. And I'm thankful for that for the rest of my life. But many of us hurt in ways that, that we don't, we don't, we're not comfortable sharing. You know, if you're a person that deals with bipolar disorder, if you deal with depression, if you deal, deal with, you know, um, suicide ideation, if you deal with just maybe your thoughts are cloudy, maybe you've got early onset dementia or Alzheimer's or one of those things that the devil tries to tell you that you have, maybe physical limitations. What we do is we kind of hold those things and we don't want people to look at us differently. Does that make sense? And can I tell you that that's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's so wrong by the word of God. Not that you have to tell all your business. Back growing up, my mom used to say, don't tell all our business. You know, some of y'all probably heard that too. But it's not a matter of me telling my business. It's me being able to, the Bible says, to confess my faults one to another that I may be healed thereby. And I remember teaching a message some time ago at our old building, can I trust you with my faults? That's what a family does. All of you have siblings for the most part, unless you're a single child. There are some single child uh, people in here. But, but you know, you, you start learning as you grow up in a family that you know who you can and who you can't trust. Isn't that right? And who you will and who you will not share with depending on, depending on what the severity of it and the degree of it. I received letters this week. I received three letters this week while I was gone. And there are people that are struggling with this. And they, they, they've come to a place where there's been a, in, in the family, there's been a little mistrust that's built up. And it doesn't make them right, nor does it make the other person wrong. But what it is, it just means that's what families do. So this morning, this morning, I want you to join hands. I just want you to join hands. Just, you don't have to cross the aisle, but just join hands where you are, on each side and the other. For those of you in the back, I want you to just join hands, if you would, please. Join hands, and, and, and I want you to just step into the realm of the Spirit with me by faith. Can you do that this morning? Every person whose hand is being held, even my, my brother and I here as he plays and I stand, we have stuff going on in our lives. Everybody, every one of you. Church is not about you just getting up here and listening to me preach for, for an hour or whatever I do. It's about you leaving this place having felt the presence of God and sensed the presence of God and feel fulfilled and know that I can make it another day. And the devil tries to tell you exactly the opposite of that. Right? How many of you, don't raise your hand, you don't have to acknowledge this, but how many of you, you, you maybe you haven't been in church for a while, maybe you, you skipped a couple Sundays for whatever reason. How guilty and how hard is it for you to get up that day and say, I'm going today. And people, you think, what are people going to say about me? We don't care. We love you. Are you feeling me this morning? I say that to our audience today. We love you. For whatever reason, you couldn't be here. We love you. Don't ever feel or sense that you are not loved by the Lord Jesus Christ and by your LifePoint family. So today, as we hold the hand of the person standing to our left or right, Father, we just come into agreement. Father, in the name of Jesus, just pray your best prayer over them. However you want to do that, pray in the Spirit, I don't care. It is in the name of Jesus that we recognize that we have the purpose for our being here today has not been to be preached to or taught to or sung at or prayed at or pray. It is not any of those things. Thank you for allowing us to experience those things. But the purpose for our being here today is so that we can engage the kingdom of heaven. That we can know beyond a shadow of a doubt that our sins have been forgiven us. That we can know beyond a shadow of a doubt there is there for now no condemnation. You love us, God. You, you desire to be with us. And our best expression of what we've had to offer today as a collective body and as a symbol body is through this service. So I pray for my brother in the name of Jesus. 
I pray for my sister in the name of Jesus that she would be healed and whole and sound by the authority of the living God today. Make a difference in her life. Make a difference in his life. Make a difference, God. Let my touch be the touch that they need today. Let the power of the Holy Spirit flow through me as a conduit, as somebody who is a bridge to their success. I am not a hindrance. I am not a barrier to them succeeding in the kingdom. I am part of them. I am with them in this journey of righteousness, and we will endure to the end. I will not let go of their hand symbolically. I will not let go of their hand in the spirit realm, God. I will strengthen my brother. If he is overtaken or she is overtaken in a fault, I am spiritual enough to strengthen them, considering that it could be me the next time that needs their strength. In the name of Jesus, God, I know when I leave here, and walk into my space I know what demons are going to try to leap out of closet so to speak <laughs> I know what obstacles are trying to going to try to trip me up but I bring all of it back into the subjection and to the obedience and the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ for I declare that I have overcome him as a dear child and greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world when you bring my sister or my brother to my thoughts, I will say, thank you, Jesus, for them. Thank you for those that have made it out today. God, I pray a divine hedge of protection. You have rebuked the devourer over their lives. When they leave this place, they will not leave your presence. They will go. They will be blessed, highly favored. Suddenly, these will hit their lives, God. They will testify of marriages, Lord God. They will testify of surprise, divine debt cancellation, supernatural debt cancellation. They will testify of healings. They will testify that they are loved. You, God, we give all glory and honor to you. If there's anybody under the sound of my voice this morning that needs to repent of sin, I say to you now, let's do it right now. I say according to 1 John 1, 8, 9, that I confess my sin. And I thank you, God, that you have there, been there and made the provision for me to be forgiven of my sin and to be cleansed from all unrighteousness. I am your child. I will not sin again on purpose or intentionally. And if I do slip and fall, not only will I repent, but I've got brothers and sisters to hold me up and hold me accountable. I thank you for that, Father. Anybody in here today who's not born again, I think most everybody is. But if you're not born again today, I want you to pray this simple prayer after me. Come on now. It's real simple, real easy. Say, Jesus, I give my heart to you. I confess that I was a sinner and I need you. But I'm not a sinner any longer because I receive you by faith. I want you to come in, live big inside of me. God, hold me accountable by your word and by your presence. Teach me all the things I need to know as I journey in this life of endurance in the kingdom. Now, Father, lastly, I pray for my brother that's in the hospital right now. Anybody that may be suffering from illness, sickness, and disease, in the name of Jesus, I bind the spirit of infirmity. I send the word of the Lord to every hospital bed, every sick bed, every bedroom, Lord God, every couch. I send the word of the Lord to you now, specifically and distinctly, and tell you to rise up, take up your bed, and walk by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be healed. Set free. Your mind be quickened by the power of God. Be alert. Be sound of mind and body and soul. I thank God for your healing and deliverance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.